with that, we'll go ahead and, and call the, uh, the election commission to order. Um, the date's Thursday, February 25th, 2021. The following members are present. Myself, the chairman, Vice Chairman Anthony Long, uh, member Susanna Wilson Overholt and member Zach Klutz. Um, I also recognize the Indiana Election Division staff, co-director Brad King, co-director Angie Nussmeyer, co-counsels Matthew Cochever and Valerie Warcha. And of course, our court reporter, Maria, as you can see her on the screen. Um, I do believe we have some testimony we're gonna receive today. Um, and so I wanna remind everybody, uh, don't, I guess we don't have to identify ourselves or do we, Maria, based on how the Zoom's set up? Uh, I think that I can see all the uh, uh, members and, and, and staff folks, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, I will pipe up if, if I don't see someone and they're speaking, so. Okay, may wouldn't hurt to identify yourself when you're speaking anyway, just so we can track the screen appropriately. Um, moving on, we'll get into compliance with the open door law. Can the co-directors please confirm that the commission meeting has been properly noticed? Mr. Chairman, on behalf of myself and co-director Nussmeyer, we can confirm that notice of this virtual meeting was given in compliance with the open door law. Okay. Um, also, before we move on, I'll remind everybody that when we get to a place where we have to vote on anything, we'll do a roll call vote. Um, I think we've done that before, but just as a reminder. Um, next, we'll do approval of the August 14th, 2020 commission meeting minutes. Uh, I recognize the co-directors to present the meeting minutes. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, on behalf of co-director Angie Nussmeyer and myself, we have uh, presented a copy of the uh, minutes for the August 14th, 2020 Indiana Election Commission uh, meeting and recommend them for your approval. I would, Anthony Long, I move we approve them. Perfect, thank you. Is there a second? Okay. Thank you, Zach. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, say aye. Uh, Vice aye. Chairman Long. Aye. Zach, was that you? I believe that was unanimous, Mr. Chairman. I can okay. get to the record. The ayes have it, good enough. Um, next, we move on to ratification of campaign finance settlement agreements. I recognize again the co-directors to present campaign finance enforcement settlement agreements to the commission for ratification. And, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, Members of the commission, uh, the co-directors distributed uh, copies of the list prepared by campaign finance staff of committees which have entered into settlement agreements, which members will recall uh, provide for the payment of the full amount of an enforcement action uh, for a delinquent report uh, by a committee, uh, but without the admission of any um, violation or other liability by that committee. Um, the list contains the name of one committee which a commission member has requested be voted on separately uh, to prevent a conflict of interest. Uh, be happy to answer any further questions. Yeah, and I, I believe commission member um, Overholt, Wilson, you had raised your hand. Did you have something you wanted to chime in on? Is it related to that or another matter? Uh, yes, and actually it is. Uh, Wilson Overholt. My name's wrong on the screen, so um, I'm not that by now. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> well, and I didn't type. Just so you know, I didn't type that in, so it's I know my name. But um, <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry. The um, <laughs> for, for the record, right? <laughs> yeah, just for the record. Just saying, oh, look, and it miraculously changed. I like that. Um, so, yes, I. I the the uh, settlement agreement with respect to the Friends of Indiana Mental Health Centers. Um, I have a um, conflict with respect to that agreement or, I mean, I, well, I would like to recuse myself from um, voting on that. So if we could carve that one out and I will vote on the others. Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly fine to that. Do we need to take a motion on that or can we just adopt it as a, as a matter of course? Or as I'm concerned, it, it just, we can do it first and then you can, then the rest of them we can do in mass. It'd be maybe a simpler way to do it. I mean, Brad, Valerie, Angela, does anybody have any issues with that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, what uh, what the vice chairman has recommended is perfectly sensible and appropriate. 
Okay. Mighty. That's not, nobody said anything like that for, I mean, for a while. <laughs> well, so are, where are we now? Are we at a, at a place where we need to, a motion to ratify the, the settlement agreements? No, you, Mr. Chairman, you, you have a, a motion under this uh, procedure to ratify the particular settlement agreement that um, Commissioner Wilson Overholt will not be participating in the vote on. If that's, is that a mo if somebody's made that motion, I'll second it. If nobody's made it, I'll make it. I think you're making it. Okay. Is there a, is there a second? Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 I, I think we're good there. And I abstained since I wanted to recuse myself anyway, so I'm not voting on that one. I got it. Um, that works. Uh, are we moving to the administration of oath? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, you have the remainder of the campaign finance settlement agreements to. Okay. Yeah. I move. Uh, with, Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the remainder of them. The remainder, yeah. Thank you. Is there a second? Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. The ayes have it, and that motion is adopted. Thank you, Brad. Uh, for those of you that will be providing testimony before the commission, um, please stand or acknowledge yourself for the administration of the oath, and I'll recognize Matthew Cochever to do so. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. All those who plan to testify before the Indiana Election Commission, uh, please say I do um, after uh, recitation of the oath. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give to the Indiana Election Commission is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Uh, please say I do if you're unmuted and able to. And also identify your name, please. Jordan Jarnigan, I do. Jay Baga, I do. Corey Hinkle, I do. <clears throat> Any others? Mark Manganero with the ES and S, I do. Is that it? Do we have any others? Tim and Chris, some other names on the screen. I'm sorry. Tim and Chris just need to unmute themselves. Yes, they. Uh, I see we've got two people that have not. Chris, Tim, I see a Tim Hallett and Chris Ortiz. Uh, Chris Ortiz. Do I you confirm. <laughs> did you say I do, Chris? I do. I do. I'm sorry. <laughs> And Tim, did we hear from you? Can we just reconfirm when and if he gets up to provide testimony, Brad? Yeah, he's. Uh, we recognize. I recognize yeah. that he's not taking the oath at this point. Uh, okay. Uh. With that, we'll move on to um, the next item on the agenda, which is the Voting System Technical Oversight Program Reports. The uh, Mr. Yeah. Chairman? Yes, sir. In the interest of, of some time here, I had a general statement I, uh, that I would like to at least state my position that would apply to all of them. Uh, and so I won't have to repeat it on each one if, if, if I might have a, a personal privilege to do that. Absolutely. Go right ahead, Vice Chairman Long. Thank you. Uh, and I'll make it as brief as I can. I I asked to see the VSTOP reports uh, uh, on each one of these that are before us today. Uh, I probably won't do that again. <laughs> they were fairly tremendously lengthy and, and well beyond my uh, capabilities to understand. I've asked our staff to uh, brief us on a little bit of some of the things that I have concerns about. And uh, 
I believe that there are a number of questions that need to be answered. Uh, and I don't want to go into them today, and but uh, and I'll explain why in just a second. But there are questions that concern me that uh, uh, need to be addressed and that we can resolve uh, in the near future. And uh, that we there needs to be some standardization on the, uh, in my opinion, the output of the computer when they produce the paper ballot trail that we uh, has become so important. Uh, we can discuss this further, but my I intend to probably accept the recommendation to approve these today, uh, based on what I've read so far. Obviously, my mind's not made up until I hear the testimony, but I, my intent would be to not disapprove them because of my questions and concerns because they run until October. So that gives us from now till October to resolve all of those issues. And then they all get recertified in October. Now that, and, and if I'm still, uh, my term ends and get, uh, there's a new appointment, whether or not I get reappointed or choose to be reappointed, that decision has not been made as far as I know. Uh, I mean, I guess my wife hasn't told me, but uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, I, I think if I'm on the commission uh, in October, and these questions remain unanswered and we don't have the standardization, it would not be my position uh, to vote to approve them. I don't think there's anything in here is really con terribly controversial. There are a number of things that and we'll, we could talk about maybe at the end that the legislature probably needs to do, but I, I'm not gonna repeat this on every one, but this this applies to every one of the, the V-STOP certifications that uh, today and, and, I, and I appreciate you letting me do this once for all of them so that there won't be any, I, mean, I, I wanna be transparent and upfront with everybody. There are some concerns that our staff has uh, that I would want satisfactorily resolved before a final recertification in October. Thank you. Okay, no, thank you, Vice Chairman. Um, I think that was probably smart to do that on the front end. I appreciate you taking the time to do that. Um, the commission's received its reports from VSTOP, uh, the Voting System Technical Oversight Program, as I mentioned, with its rec recommendations regarding certain applications for approval of voting system applications and system engineering change orders. Um, as Vice Chairman Long noted, the reports have been provided to members before today's meeting. Um, I'd now like to recognize representatives of the Ball State University, which administers the Technical Oversight Program for a presentation regarding <clears throat> Uh, these voting system applications for certification and the engineering change orders for approval by the commission. Um, before we begin consideration of each specific voting system application or engineering change order, other than uh, Vice Chairman Long, are there any other additional comments or anything to be offered before we move forward? Hearing none, um, commission will consider first the application of the Election systems and software for certification of express vote 6.0.4.0 optical scan voting system. There's a representative from ESNS or any other person who would like to testify regarding this matter. Good afternoon, Commission. I'm Jordan Jarnigan, certification specialist with VSTOP. Um, with me, I have Dr. Jay Baga, co director for VSTOP. And I believe that Mark Manganero and Tim Hallett are both um, from the vendor, ES and S, and they're also on the phone. So to start. Yeah, go ahead. If, yeah, if I can, this is Mark Manganero with ES and S. Sure. I'm the, Indiana, I, I'm the Indiana State Certification Manager, and I do have uh, Tim Hallett. Uh, he's the Vice President of Certification uh, for ES and S. He had to actually come join me. Uh, in my office. And, and again, you all, you both um, affirmed that you've received the oath. And, and Maria, can you get, you have their names adequately? Yes, I've got them from the screen. Thank you. Okay, good. Sorry. Now, go, go ahead. I've heard Mr. Hallett acknowledge the oath. Yeah. Perfect. Hi, this is Tim Hallett, and I acknowledge the oath. Yeah, thank you. Go go yeah. right ahead, Mark. And, and if I just could, uh, I'm very new to Zoom. This is my first Zoom call. I usually use team, so I don't know. Can you guys see us in here or? No, you're, you're blank, but we can hear you fine. 
Okay, great. And then I just saw where the button is for the mute and the unmute. You, if this is your first introduction to Zoom, you've missed some good stuff in the past. So, <laughs> so, so I've so heard. Lucky. Don't so be surprised if somebody comes on board with us. <laughs> and then I'll, I, I was just planning on going on mute and then Jordan, uh, um, I'm, I, I'm assuming would run through the report and then we're available for any clarifying questions. Yeah, that, that'd be fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, again, I'm Jordan Jarnigan, certification specialist for VSTOP. Um, to start, the EVS 6040 is a new paper-based end-to-end election management system, or EMS, that supports your jurisdiction's needs by creating and maintaining a central election database, formatting and printing of ballots, programming election equipment, and collecting reporting results. EVS 6040 includes many key enhancements, such as new security features, changes to the reports and report module, on-screen adjudication of scanned ballot images. I will mention this a little bit more below. Um, and additional multi-language and audio support features. Uh, that's not a, every change, but that's just kind of some of the big ones I'm hitting on. So the voting system was field tested at Ball State University on August 11th, 2020 by the VSTOP team. During the feed field test, ESNS presented a feature for the electronic adjudication of scanned ballots through the electionware software. After discussion of the feature with the election division, it was determined that Indiana law does not authorize the use of that procedure to make determinations regarding the tallying of votes or the validity of a ballot. Uh, for this certification, the feature must be disabled among the ESNS EVS 6040 voting systems utilized in Indiana. Um, and then Brad and Angie can correct me if I'm wrong. I, it should be House Bill 1365. There is pending legislation to um, authorize the use of adjudication, which if that is approved, then by the October 1st recertification, we could remove this limitation. Um, the field test included verification of all required elements of the Indiana statutes regarding voting systems, as well as an ADA compliance evaluation. Mock elections, including IEC approved test cases, scenarios for straight party voting were conducted on the voting system. Based on VSTOP's review and evaluation, we find that the EVS 6040 voting system meets all requirements of the Indiana Code for use in the state of Indiana. Thank you, Jordan. Any, anything else? No, not at this time for me. Any questions or discussion among the commission members? Yeah, I, had, I had a question, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely. Um, thank you. So, um, well, this kind of relates to the statement in the report about the feature that had to be, has to be disabled. Um, what I'm wondering is when, um, there are features that are supposed to be disabled or enabled because of various requirements of Indiana law. Um, is there some sort of mechanism um, within the system itself to verify that that feature is in fact disabled at the time of the election? Um, and I, I'm, I know I'm asking a compound question, but they all kind of go together. And I think related to that, you know, if, if there is any ability for the system to be connected to the internet or something like that, is there a way to verify or some sort of alert that would um, be triggered if the system were somehow connected to the internet? In other words, making sure that things are not going on that shouldn't be going on, right. <laughs> basically. It really has disconnected the way it says it has. Yes. Um, Mark, do you mind if I defer this question to you? Not a problem. So um, first off with the adjudication feature, uh, this is turned on and off uh, by an election where license. So any uh, customer, once the system's actually uh, certified in the state, I would put that in my database. And then any customer that would order this specific version 
of electionware would we, would receive a license file with that feature and functionality turned off. So the adjudication is actually taking place within a module of electionware called results. So anything related to the adjudication would be grayed out and wouldn't be uh, activated. Um, as far as internet access, uh, this is an EAC certified system. Uh, the hardening procedures uh, don't allow for internet access. And additionally, uh, we go into the system bias and actually turn off all external ports. Um, additionally, the customer could uh, purchase uh, plastic uh, blocks and plugs uh, for any of the RJ45 uh, jacks or any of the other ports uh, on their laptop computer or their PC, whichever one they would want to use. Uh, thank you. Did that, that answer your question? I think so. Okay. <laughs> That his answer raises a question for me, if I might, Mr. Chairman. Sure, sure. Please go right ahead. Uh, as I understand, you say you, you turn it off before you send it to the customer. How, who has the capacity to turn it back on? So essentially what we do uh, with any election management PC is first we uh, acquire the PC. We totally wipe that PC then what we do is we reinstall the Windows operating system. We install the Windows updates and then all of our uh, proprietary software and the COT software. Then what we do is we run the hardening scripts, which turns off any unnecessary uh, uh, software on the system, restricts access to certain users on the system. And then we physically go into the BIOS uh, and uh, make those physical changes, the turning off the ports, turning off the wireless, uh, Bluetooth if it has it. That's, that's usually, that's that's usually done cool. by our uh, election system and software uh, technicians, either on site or at our facility in Omaha. So that can be done on site? That could be done on site, correct. By anyone who had, protest, had the technical sophistication to do that? Normally, our, techni our uh, technicians here in Omaha would go out and do it on site. I didn't, I didn't, that's not my question. Okay. <laughs> if, if not your one person that was not associated with you had the technical expertise, could they go into the system in the field uh, and, and uh, uh, change the, well, let, let's make it simple, turn on something that you turned off or vice versa? Uh, I don't think they could. Uh, one thing they would have to have the uh, the uh, username and the passwords for the system administrator. Once the system is locked down, if I wanted to go on and say um, put in Internet Explorer, that wouldn't be allowed. Who is who is the system administrator? Yeah, that was going to be my question. Is that is yeah. that your person or the county or? So what we essentially do with the uh, the system administrator is usually someone at the county level um, in the IT department. And then as part of that hardening uh, process, we can create a user, election user um, um, groups. So for instance, um, say I'm in Marion County, the head of my IT department, he would be the system administrator. Um, and as the clerk of Marion County, I would be what we would call the election administrator. So the only thing I could do is I could log into election where and I can do anything in election where uh, from the front end of the election to the back end of the election. Uh, additionally, if I have other people in my office uh, working with me, I could assign, say, Tim Hallett, I want you to only be able to go into election where and actually enter election specific data. Um, additionally, I could have uh, a results user where I could have that user just be able to go into electionware and just be able to go in and uh, download results. So that results user wouldn't be able to do what Tim did, wouldn't be able to do what I did as the election administrator. But the election administrator or someone who would able be able to learn the, the login name and password could sign in at, in the county and then make changes to the system uh, 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 from that, from, from the county for that particular system. 
Is that no, the, uh, no. Where? So the way it's set up, if I am the election administrator, that is the election administrator um, within uh, the election software. So anybody on there, I can't go in, log in as the election administrator and add programs. I have to do that from the system administrator role. So the, the, the yes. Yeah, so I think I know where you're going. So the system administrator could log in. Well, what you said earlier was the uh, administrator has the password, and they could log in and and do things. Now you're saying they no, they can't. I'm, I I want absolutely. So, certain. So, so I guess I guess a better a better way to explain it is the system administrator has rights to make changes. And who's the, the, ele the election? Who who would that be? And that's usually uh, somebody at the county level in their IT department. Well, you're telling me that there is someone at the county level that has the access possibilities to make changes to the system. Yes, because you always have to have you always have to have that role in there. Uh, to be able to, so when they get an upgrade, they're going to want to go in there. They're going to want to be able to take off the old software and put on the new software. And one other thing, you say this is a Windows-based operating system. Yes. Now, when I've got, I, you know, it's obvious by my questions how sophisticated I am in this area, but my phone, my iPad, Windows communicates with me all the time directly from the Windows and you need to upgrade, you need to do this. Uh, that tells me that there is an outside source into my equipment from Windows uh, that they're reaching me through the internet or through some whatever it is. Mm -hmm. that they, they can access my computer to talk to me and say, you need to do this. Uh, how is how is this system you've got different than that? So that they there would be no outside contact uh, uh, with the system. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's a closed system. It's not on the network. So it's not like Windows is going through the internet, uh, pinging Microsoft and saying, "Hey, I only have like Service Pack One and Service Pack Two is available." Well, I think. You know, Susanna, you 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 ask a great question there. It's a, uh, I I have some concerns in, for the October round with all the conspiracy and all the things that have gone on about elections, stealing and cheating and all the things that I don't think happen. But to, to resolve these these arguments, we're going to have to have, I think, a level. Of, of the capacity to make changes that is above and beyond some one local person uh, in the county level, uh, and I don't I don't know what the answer is, but I I think that's a problem that's going to have to be addressed in my mind. Yeah, I would, and I guess, to, and I under, I understand the. Um, issues regarding, you know, updating software and someone needs to be able to do that and everything else. And so I guess that, I mean, what I was raised, I think there's a difference between their softwares that allow, you know, have built in audit trails. So when someone goes in and makes the upgrade, it, you know, will show, you know, you can print reports or whatever that show who those users who have accessed and all that kind of stuff. And I think, you know, and so oftentimes that kind of built in kind of compliance type stuff can be, you know, very helpful and resolves one issue. But I think you know, what Anthony was alluding to, what I was asking about, and I think, again, just something, you know, to be looked at, I guess, before October for various systems is just, are there um, alerts? You know, if on election day, someone were to somehow be trying to get into a system even, and so, um, you know, something that goes off showing that, oh, someone, oh, someone externally who's got no business being here is trying to hack into the system, basically. Um, and then on the other hand, just the assurances that the way the systems are developed, that yes, if they are totally disconnected from the internet, wireless access, whatever, that therefore they are truly hardened and, and 
you know, and that, so that risk is basically reduced to zero. Yeah, so um, they uh, are hardened systems. And it's important to know these are not uh, integrated into any county's network. These are separate uh, PCs, monitors, uh, keyboards, mice uh, that are not connected up to the internet at all. I've uh, actually done uh, site support out in Indiana in Elkhart County and um, their computer uh, is secured, uh, turned off, totally unplugged. And then on election day, at some point, they will set that system up in their county. I'd like to ask a quick question. This may be more for, for Jordan or, or um, Brad, maybe you and Angela can, is this, is what we're discussing, is this unique to ESNS or does this kind of apply to all the voting systems? I mean, is there, is there internet access with all the voting systems we use in Indiana? And do they also have a similar setup to where you have an IT administrator in the county that can can access that? Is, can you speak to that at all? Yes, this is Jordan. Um, so most of the voting systems would work the same way. They would all be hardened systems of uh, maybe not Windows necessarily, um, but they would have an underlying operating system. Uh, with that, you would secure the, the voting machine, disable ports, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, basically any way for somebody to gain access to the system. So it wouldn't have internet access. You wouldn't be able to connect to it through you know, some unknown access point, hopefully. Um, that is There's as long as everything between ES and S and I, micro, I don't know all the ones that we have in Indiana, but there's some level of parity in what's being discussed here as a, as a potential issue for the others as well. Yes. So um, these concerns could be um, utilized across all of the voting system vendors, the same okay. exact concerns. Um, okay. So I know I'm willing to discuss them with the commission, with the election division. Um, I'm sure the rest of the VSTOP team would love to be involved in coming up with a solution to meet everybody's concerns on the issues. I assume, Mr. Chairman, that this would be uniformly applied or would be equally applicable to all the system. Yeah. We S and S gets to get on the bubble first. See, that's that, that was good. We got stuff out of thinking. <laughs> We're getting the party started. <laughs> Brad or Angela, do you have anything you'd like to offer on this? Uh, Mr. Chair. Right, oh, right. Go ahead, Angie. I'll defer to you, Brad. Go ahead. All right. No, I was just going to say I, I have nothing really further to add except to say that uh, there is pending legislation that was referenced earlier. Uh, that among other things contains language explicitly prohibiting uh, voting systems from having internet uh, connectivity. Um, and so we're likely to have some more specific statutory language um, when the current legislative session is over. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and just to clarify, uh, this system is not connected to the internet in any way. Um, anything we do, um, our, our, our software is installed either via USB or uh, a CD. Uh, I know, I know uh, now Microsoft has kind of went to the Windows model. It doesn't seem like you can buy an installed disk anymore, but these are ISO images that we create. We don't go to Microsoft website and download that uh, from the internet. And any of the updates are all offline updates. Mr. Chairman, could I ask Jordan a question? Absolutely, go right ahead. Did I understand you to say that these systems, someone goes in and disables Bluetooth and Wi-Fi also? Yeah, so if it's a, um, a laptop that you would use for reporting, like the voting machine itself isn't gonna be a typical laptop, but if it's a laptop or a computer where you would run reports on at the county level, um, they would go through and disable any unnecessary feature. Um, some voting machines may have some form of network connectivity, and then those would be disabled before anybody 
gets on the machine to vote. Oh, what if they got undisabled by that one person in the field that's got the capacity to do that? Then they could, then it would be connected to the internet, would it not? Uh, it depends. So if the only means of connecting to it is through a cable, an ethernet cord, then somebody would have to connect the ethernet cord and then the cord would have to go somewhere. Um, if it's in, say, a school and it's in the middle of a gymnasium, they're voting, then finding somewhere to connect the voting machine to in the middle of a gym floor while poll workers are walking around would be a little bit obvious, I would think. Well, that's not, I'm not concerned with the, that situation. I'm concerned if they did it, you, you said, well, if they connected with a cable, it seems to me that if they disable these connections, there would be then a way to connect to the internet some way. Uh, and is, 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 a, is that, that should be a simple, can you connect to the internet if someone locally enables these functions that are, that are uh, disabled? That's a, that's a simple question. Yes, they can or no, they can't. Um, I would give you a yes or a no, but again, it depends. So if say it's a wireless connectivity, they would still have to join a network. So you could enable the ability to connect to a network, but without actually connecting to a network, you couldn't, if that makes sense. Well, if you talk in that language, as long as you say yes or no, and, and there are ways that, well, if you could, it depends on getting to a network. These folks are pretty damn sophisticated. I mean, we're not talking about some kid sitting in I and of course that may be, a, they, they probably are the better ones, but well, I mean, we're talking about people that, that, that run computer, computer systems in countries. Mm -hmm. uh, the, so I, I gotta assume they're the most sophisticated people in the world along with our people. So if, if one of these highly sophisticated people, I mean, I, I'm not the guy telling you, it seems like to me, if you en enable it, and then I take the Wi-Fi and connect it with another computer that is network connected, those two connections then could put the, the uh, system uh, online with the internet uh, by that method. I'd like to piggyback off of Vice Chairman Long's comments because it, if I understood correctly, there's a, an elections administrator and, a, and a, what I'll call an IT administrator who works for the county, right? That IT administrator is the person who could, to, to Vice Chairman Long's point, enable internet access on the system. Stands the reason that person would also be able then to easily join a network. Is that, am I following the, the custody correctly here? I guess Jordan, that's a question for you. Yeah, this is Jordan. Um, so yes, that makes sense. An IT person at a county or whoever has system administration access to a voting machine could connect it, uh, enable the feature and connect it to the internet somewhere. Um, the In only via, problem- Via county network, correct? Yes. So my only concern would be if they did it from, say, they worked at a county building and then the voting machine got taken to a voting location, that network access wouldn't be at that voting location, just at the county. <laughs> this has got to be resolved before October, in my mind. So that's just. Oh, uh, and this is Mark Mangan with the s and I don't know if I can jump in, but sure, go um, ahead. our. Are you guys talking about the uh, electionware software or the tabulators that are out in the field? Somebody mentioned something about at a school. So um, if you're in a school gymnasium, our kind of basic configuration would be a DS200 uh, precinct tabulator and an express vote. Those machines cannot connect to the internet. They're you know, once the they're going to have to be resolved. You can give me all the anecdotal opportunities or scenarios where they can't do it, but I want to. I want it done. It can't be done anywhere, anytime, any way, unless something happens that is a satisfactory. I mean, a level of. A, I know somebody's got to have the ability to make changes. I, yeah, the safeguards built in here that one person sitting in the county, one person can make a. Could, could be able to cause havoc in an election 
if they were inclined to do that. And, and that has to be somehow have so many levels of that things would have to go through to get it done that it is virtually impossible not to happen. Mr. Chairman, if I could, and I don't want to lead Mark into some questions here, but I think this might go to Anthony's concerns and, and maybe the rest of the commission. Yeah. And that is, I think when we're talking about, at least for the ESNF system, the concern about connectivity is with the one central computer that the election management software resides on. And that is the computer where the county is going to be making and coding their elections and building their ballots and tabulating the results after the election. And so in that instance, I think what, what people are saying is that it is possible to connect a computer to the internet in that situation, except that federal and, and soon to be state law confirms that that system has to be hardened, meaning it cannot touch the internet. And that's when we're talking about disabling Bluetooth and other things on a, the one PC, that we're doing that in a way to harden the system to create that air gap. And I think what I'm hearing Mark say, and Mark, I don't wanna lead you into the answer, but I think what I'm hearing you say is that the individual voting system units that are deployed out to the polling places, at least for your system, do not have any type of modem or wireless connectivity where somebody could go in and plug it into a wall or tap into a modem within your system that is, is, is an, in and of itself a hardened system because it has no capacity to even touch the internet. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Correct. Okay. So at least for the ESNS system, the individual units going to your polling places would not be able to be connected to the internet, but at the local level, at that main centralized computer hub, the IT administrator could enable, if you will, wireless connectivity or network connectivity based on what I'm hearing you say that your software would allow them to do. But there's an established best practice and federal and state and soon to be state law that has something to point to to say that that system has to be air gapped. The, the bottom line is there's laws that prevent people from killing people. But you know that people murder people every day. Yeah. And just because the law says it it, you hit the nail on the head, Angie, can't be connected to the internet, and, and nobody's been able to say it can't be connected to the internet, period. They're saying it can't be connected to the internet unless, and as long as that unless is in there, then we've got a level of security that uh, uh, I think we have to be able to answer. Anybody with, with conspiracy theory, beliefs, or whatever it is, or factual or not, that we have done everything to see that this happens. I mean, so one to, to, to Vice Chairman Long's point, right? What I and AJ, I think you did a good job of summarizing it. So it's sort of left hand, right hand. The machines out in the field, right? They're airtight. You get it back to where the county counts or processes the election. And and to Vice Chairman Long's point, an IT administrator could connect that machine. Could harden it right connect that machine to the internet and and create some level of manipulation potential i mean i don't know how feasible that is but that's and vice chairman long don't let me put words you off but to summarize kind of your concern i think that's what it is right and, and i think it can be fixed or it can be made so difficult it's you know virtually impossible i don't nothing's impossible in this world i just think having one person having the access to the to the to, the, to be able to make some changes at the county level is an unacceptable level of security for my mind. And, and so, so with that summation, Mark, do you have anything else you'd like to, to say on the matter? Uh, no. Uh, any other comments or questions? Hey, Mr. Chairman, if you would, wouldn't mind indulging me, one more question for Mark. Yeah, go directly. It was just, it, it was the one question that I saw um, based on all the reports. And that is your main computer, your main PC that your software resides on for the EMS mark. It mentions a Windows 7 operating system. And I know that Microsoft has stopped supporting that as of January last year. Um, I, I suspect the answer is because the computer is hardened and air gapped, having an older operating system isn't that big of a deal in terms of running your software. 
Um, but I, I did raise that question for my board members um, just as a, a potential concern and thought you might want to address that. Yeah. And, yeah, and that is correct. It is a Windows uh, 7 system. Um, we have an agreement with Microsoft um, to um, support, um, it's a January of 23, uh, to support Windows 7 until January of uh, 2023, um, you did bring up a good point. It is an air gap system uh, that is hardened. And then um, our next uh, release that we would be bringing to the state, 6200, uh, would actually be Windows 10. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely, thank you. Um, Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, can I get a motion to approve the application for certification of the ESNS Express Vote 6.0.4.0 in accordance with this recommendation from VSTOP uh, and subject to any restriction or additional requirements in that recommendation for a term expiring on October 1st, 2021, which I hope Vice Chairman Long, that provision helps address your concern. Subject to my comments earlier and my questions, I believe, you know, my, I think I made it clear. This is this from, from now to October, I, I'm comfortable with where we are and we've got time to move. And so with that caveat, I will make that motion. Is there a second? Okay. Thank you, Zach. Any, here, uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Okay. It's unanimous, the motion is adopted. Uh, next, the commission will consider the application of ESNS for approval of engineering change order 1103 for its express vote 5.2.4.0 voting system. We have representatives here from ESNS. Would you like to testify on the matter or anyone from VSTOP? Jordan Jarnigan will. Go ahead. So the ECO 1103 is a de minimis ECO. Um, it is for the express vote V2.1. The express vote V2.1 is utilized by the EVS 5240 voting system, as well as the aforementioned EVS 6040 voting system. Um, in your recommendation, I had written that it was pending on your vote whether or not that it would apply to the 6040. Um, but the 5240 voting system is currently already certified for use in Indiana. Um, ECO 1103 updates the CMOS battery to extend time between maintenance events. Members of the VSTOP team have reviewed the ECO supporting documents as well as the VISTOL report. VSTOP finds that the ECO complies with the requirements for de minimis changes to hardware components and VSTOP recommends approval of ECO 1103 for the EVS 5240 and EVS 6040 voting systems. Thank you, Jordan. Any questions, uh, discussion from the commission? Hearing none. Is there a motion to adopt VSTOP's recommendation for the approval of the engineering change or 1103 as described in the report um, as modifications to ESNS express vote 5.2.4.0 voting system with this approval being effective immediately? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Thank you, Zach. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Excuse me. Um, VSTOP uh, in its presentation indicated that this uh, engineering change order was recommended uh, for also the uh, 6.0.4.0 system based on the commission's vote to certify. And yes. so just to clarify the extent of the motion may be helpful. To clarify, so you, you want to re, you want to reissue a motion? Is that what you're asking, Brad? 
No, Mr. Chairman, I'm just saying if the commission members wish to amend their motion to in incorporate the voting system they just voted to, to certify, that will clarify the scope of the engineering change order. What's the recommendation of VSTOP? That we do so. Well, I would, I, I intended to adopt the VSTOP recommendation in my motion. I, yeah, I just didn't. In in my reading of an of a request to offer a motion, I to, to Brad's point, I didn't I didn't call out the fact that it also applied to six point oh point four point oh that we had just voted on previously. I think was your point, right, Brad? Yes, Mr. Chairman, that's correct. Going to have to tighten up there, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm loosening the turns. It's just getting rough. Um, I'll take that as a as a an amendment to the to the motion. Vice Chairman? Yes. Second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 The motion is adopted. Um, moving on, the commission will now consider the application of the Hart InterCivic for certification of its Verity Voting 2.5 hybrid optical scan voting system. Do we have any representatives from Hart InterCivic or anyone from VSTOP that wants to comment on this? Jordan Jarnigan. Go ahead. The Hart InterCivic Verity Voting 2.5 voting system is an upgrade to the Verity Voting 2.3, which is currently certified for use in the state of Indiana. Hart InterCivic originally applied to have Verity Voting 2.4 certified, but while we were reviewing the documentation, they had postponed the certification of that to wait for Verity Voting 2.5. Verity Voting 2.5 contains a number of software component and hardware changes, which include upgrading from Windows 7 to Windows 10, the addition of Verity Duo Go and Verity Duo standalone devices. And then the Verity Voting 2.5 also includes all of the software changes from Verity Voting 2.4 which is why they wanted to delay the certification, go with 2.5 due to the hardware and Windows software upgrades that it included. The 2.4 software changes dealt with primarily security enhancements and many improved usability features. As with Verity Voting 2.3, the Verity Voting Touch Rider Duo device included in Verity Voting 2.5 is a series of up to 12 ballot marking devices connected together via a closed network daisy chain. VSTOP maintains its position from the precedent set with the currently certified Indiana Verity 2.3 that the network is closed and poses no additional vulnerabilities or threat without having direct physical access to the hardware. The Verity Vote Duo Go and Verity standalone devices are new to Verity 2.5. They do not require connecting to another Verity device over that daisy chain network. And then the Verity Duo Go is actually intended to be used for curbside voting. It's a mobile option. Verity Voting 2.5 was field tested at Ball State University on December 21st, 2020 by the VSTOP team. The field test included verification of all required elements of Indiana statutes regarding voting systems, as well as ADA compliance evaluation. Mock elections, including IEC approved test case scenarios for straight party voting were conducted on the voting system. For this certification, the electronic adjudication feature must be disabled among the Verity Voting 2.5 voting systems utilized in Indiana. And based on VSTOP's review and evaluation, we find that the Hart InterCivic Verity Voting 2.5 voting system meets all the requirements of the Indiana Code for use in the state of Indiana. Thank you, Jordan. Um, any questions or comments from any commission members? May I, Mr. Chairman? Please go ahead. This will be the simple question. We had a series of questions regarding the ESNS system with the same questions received similar answers. Uh, if it applied to the Hart Civic uh, Verity voting system. Jordan, would you like to respond to that? Yes, regarding the connectivity to the internet? Primarily, yes. Okay, um, so 
the Verity voting, it, they do have a network access, but everything should be hardened, as we'd mentioned before. Um, the the devices do connect to one again to one another. Um, Dr. Bagam may be able to explain a little bit more about this due to Verity 2.3 being tested before I had joined VStop, and uh, Corey Vendor from Heart Inner Civic on the phone might be able to help answer some of these questions a little better as well. Well, thank you, Jordan. Uh, this is Baga, if I may. I yeah. thought maybe we just brought his picture in today. <laughs> how are you, doctor? Uh, I'm pretty good. Uh, Commissioner Long, how are you, sir? I'm doing fine. We've been around. We've been doing this a while, haven't we? We, we have. Yes, we have been doing this a while. We're looking seeing you at the meetings. Uh, I certainly am looking forward to. Yes, of course, we are all under COVID conditions. So I miss seeing people in person. I certainly do. But you're looking good on the screen, Commissioner Long. <laughs> So uh, yes, so I would echo everything that Jordan said and, and the questions are similar for all voting systems. The, the daisy chain network connection is a closed network connection where the ballot marking devices are uh, uh, connected. This discussion came up in the last certification for the currently certified system and we have maintained that position. Nothing has changed since then, since the commission certified it last for that particular uh, configuration of daisy chain. But the other questions about internet connectivity are similar, Commissioner Long, to the ESNS system and the same questions uh, will have similar answers about hardening. And I'll defer uh, to Corey, uh, who is also present uh, here, uh, to add anything to this. He's the heart representative. Corey? Thanks. Hi, this is Corey Hinkle. Um, yeah, so just to comment on the internet connectivity. Um, sh the short answer is uh, our system, both, you know, the devices at the polling locations and the central, uh, you know, county level locations cannot connect to the internet. Um, and just to give a little background explanation on that. Um, so we use a system that's built from the ground up that only includes components that are necessary in the operating system. So we actually uh, don't include any um, elements that uh, in our in our operating system image, we don't include any elements that uh, allow internet connectivity, um, and that's that started from the trusted build stage uh, for you know creating our operating system images. So, um, yeah, internet connectivity is not capable. We don't have to actually disable any Bluetooth or Wi-Fi on our systems because they aren't enabled on the operating system image. Um, so it's not something that you know anyone at the county level would even need to worry about because it's, it's not possible to uh, make any of those changes based on our operating system image that we have installed on our machines. So whether it be the machine out in the field or any central counting uh, machine, as, as co-director Nussmeyer referred to with ESNS, what I hear you saying is it's regardless or irrespective of whether there's an IT administrator or not, they cannot log in and connect anything to the internet. Is that what you're saying? That is correct. Yeah. And uh, all of our systems uh, operate in kiosk mode. So uh, it's, it's an air-gapped hardened system that cannot connect to the internet. Very good. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, is there a motion to uh, approve the application for certification of the Heart Inner Civic Verity Voting 2.5 hybrid optical scan system in accordance with the recommendation of VSTOP, subject to any restriction or additional requirement in that recommendation for a term expiring October 1st, 2021? As before, for the same reasons, I make that motion. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you, Zach. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, the ayes have it. Motion is adopted. Finally, the commission will now consider the application for the Unison uh, Open Elect 2.1 Optical Scan Voting System certification. Is there a representative from Unison or anyone from BSOP that would like to comment on this? 
Jordan Jarnigan from Vista. Yeah, go right ahead, Jordan. Open Elect 2.1 is a paper-based ballot optical scan voting system, which is a modification to Open Elect 2.0A voting system, which is currently certified for use in Indiana. Open Elect 2.1 contains numerous updates to various components and software to include several security enhancements, usability improvements to ballot layout manager, election manager, freedom vote tablet, and other components, and then updated and newly add hardware components such as an uninterruptible power supply and updated power supplies for various components. After our initial review, Unison also submitted five ECOs to VSTOP. The ECOs involve software modifications. So there's ECO 17110, which increases the accuracy for write-in report function, 17111, which is related to the voter registration input interface on the OVO tabulator, 17112, which changes calculations so that paper, the ballots print the correct length, 17113, which updates a database query, 17114, which removes a disable command in order to prevent it from interfering with a ballot that may be in process. Open Elect 2.1 was field tested at Ball State University on August 13th, 2020 by the VSTOP team. The field test included verification of all required elements of the Indiana statutes regarding voting systems, as well as an ADA compliance evaluation. Mock elections, including IEC approved test case scenarios for straight party voting were conducted on the voting system. For this certification, the electronic adjudication feature must be disabled among the Open Elect 2.1 voting systems utilized in Indiana. Based on VSTOP's review and evaluation, we find that Unison Open Elect 2.1 voting system meets all the requirements of the Indiana code for use in the state of Indiana. Thank you, Jordan. Any discussion or questions from the commission? Um, I noticed that this system, all, that there's a, um, that this is a Windows 7 system. I know we talked about the issue of Windows 7 versus Windows 10. Um, what are the plans for um, upgrading to Windows 10? This is uh, Chris Ortiz, Director of Certification for Unison. Um, we use actually a Linux system. I'm not sure what you're referring to. Oh, okay. there's, no, there's, Sorry. No, there's no Windows in our system at all. Okay, never mind then. Thank you. Any other questions? Same questions. If, if I ask, I guess, to Jordan, the same questions regarding disabling and those things that we talked about earlier, would they be likewise applicable to the inner system uh, operation? I realize this is a paper ballot based system where, I, as I understand that there is going to be a hard copy paper ballot created. Uh, the trail is not as important, but as far as tabulating and, and counting the ballots, uh, is there is there a certain system administrator locally that can affect changes? Uh, that that this is Chris Ortiz again. Uh, similar to what Hart and ESNS said, the, the system is not connected to the internet. Um, the system actually did go through the Idaho test lab as part of the DHS. The system went through a very extensive penetration of vulnerability test. And a lot of that stuff is documented. But again, in order to alleviate some of your concerns, Commissioner Long, whatever you know the board decides to do as far as October with vulnerability testing, penetration testing, we're willing to do whatever it takes to, to ease some of those concerns. My question is, is not the testing side of it, but is it physically, if the same questions were asked as we did with the ES and S, uh, there is a, it is physically possible for a person at the county level to connect this thing in some form or fashion to the internet? No, there's no way possible. There's no, in the voting devices at the precinct level, there is no modem capability, whether wi Wi-Fi or network capability in the precinct. I'm and not then, talking about precinct. I ask that the county tabulate where they, they don't where they come into the to the county to the central tabulating system. 
that's the one I'm concerned. I can understand the ones out in the field in the precincts, but the, at the county where the final vote tally is generated, uh, is that possible? The system is a is a hardened Linux system, and all of that functionality similar to hard. All of that functionality is turned off on okay. installation. So you've same thing. Answered, you've answered my question. Turn, when okay. you turned off, that was the that was the the key word. I'm with you. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the application for certification of the Unison OpenElect 2.1 optical scan voting system in accordance with the recommendation of VSTOP and subject to any restriction or additional requirement in that recommendation for a term expiring October 1st, 2021? With a caveat as before, I make that motion. Thank you. Second. Thanks. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Aye, the ayes have it. And then the motion is adopted. And Thank you. I believe that that brings us to conclusion, correct, Brad? Did I, at the conclusion, I, at the outset, I said I was going to bring something up at the end that relates to all of these systems. I didn't, want to, didn't think we needed to discuss as we went through them. Sure, go right ahead. Uh, this is going to be really short and I hope and sweet. We've had certification set in compliance with Indiana law. It's my belief now that after some level of study and ed being educated, that there are areas that are not necessarily covered by Indiana law that caused me some concern. Uh, and I think one of the problems, what well, we've done this, this paper trail thing and this what we, we've entered into a level of sophistication, sophistication in the computer uh, world that I think we have to stay legislatively abreast of it. I think that's the real purpose of the division. And I think that's the, the purpose of the commission to help advise the legislature that there, here are some areas that we're having to make decisions on that You've not you've not opined on, and if you don't opine on it and give us direction, we've got to either ignore them or we've got to come up with our own solutions. For example, we, this paper trail deal, which is a, a really a, a big deal, it's been I mean it's this this has been a long fought battle and a, and a worthwhile battle I think. Uh, when they print out from the system the the ballot card. What the computer did, and I don't, I don't know the vernacular, but the, when the computer, in a recount situation or a verification situation, prints out the ballot card, I believe there should be a, a standardized form of that printout that is applicable statewide. Uh, I asked to see some uh, in discussions of this. I asked to see some copies of the various ones that are printed out, and they're. And, and I, I'm not being critical of the, the folks that run these systems. I, I'm a believer. I've done this a long time. And, and I think our, our uh, vendors are really reputable uh, first class operations and, and they do their jobs and they, they, they uh, and I'm proud that they choose to work in Indiana. But I think that if we should tell them and there is no standard on the ballot printout. So they've each de developed their own format. I think that the division should advise the legislature, do you wish to address this? If not, we, you know, our commission may have to address it because we think, I think it's important in recounts that we have a standardized system that anybody, a lay person can pick up a printed out uh, ballot has been generated and, and understand and see how that individual voted. I mean, clearly without interpretation, the ones I got, I couldn't do that. And I, I know I'd have to have somebody interpret this for me. Uh, I think there are other areas that the legislature has uh, maybe not kept pace with the technology. I think that the, the commission should direct the, the division or request the division to provide technical updated information to the legislature so they can give the have the opportunity 
we've made decisions uh, in areas, and I'm not saying they're bad decisions, uh, that the legislature is not giving us real direction on. And I think that there should be a, a, a more sophisticated legislature. These are decisions that I think the legislature needs to make. I don't necessarily agree with a lot of their decisions, but I, I, the law says they are the ones that make the decisions. It's not us. Our job is to enforce, and we're asking them for, uh, I would be asking them, give us some direction and how you want like the form of the, of the ballot printout, things that have advanced beyond when the legislation and the laws have changed. I haven't followed what's out there as closely as I should at this time, but I, I think that we, we need to get something uh, uniform statewide uh, in that area. There may well be other areas uh, that, uh, and all the questions that I think have to be answered, most of them can be answered. Uh, but these things need to be taken care of and, and hopefully that we've got an easier job in October. But that's, I, I think we need to enhance our communication uh, with the legislature, advise them that, you know, we're having to make decisions. You need to weigh in on it if you wish to weigh in. If you don't weigh in, it's like in the law, the, the courts make this, the appellate level courts make decisions and Six, eight years later, they'll come back and say, well, we did this. The legislature hadn't seen fit to change it. They must be satisfied with it. So, you know, we're okay. Uh, and uh, I think that's where we are on this technology. But that's uh, that's my two cents. And thank you all very much for allowing me to say it. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, any other closing comments? Hearing none, the commission has finished its business for the day. Is there a motion for the Indian Election Commission to adjourn? Thank you. All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 That's it. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your week and weekend. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Good you. to see you all.